Last time on BPF. First you want to do the normal setup of cleaning your area with alcohol, 70% alcohol. Get it all cleaned up. Felt some crumbs here. I'm going to clean that up a little more. Feel around. Make sure everything's cleaned up and where it needs to be. Yep, feels good. So I already have everything all set up. What's nice about this thermal tape is that you can still see the weave pattern underneath. I leave a slight like maybe a millimeter, two tops, exposed. And that's because once I tuck the carbon fiber, I at least want to make sure it touches where it needs to make contact. It allows a little bit of overlap if need be. And then when I cut it, it'll still expose what it needs to, but it'll make sure that everything's close. If some epoxy lands to where it connects it, that's even better. Here, same thing. Now I still have that closed off just as a friendly reminder that that's getting painted. So it's gonna be a very cautious process, right? So right now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add the black tinted epoxy and get this all set up. Just a friendly reminder also, I didn't get this on film. Before you load up the epoxy, always test fit your part. Now this is going to be a little longer, you do have to still accommodate for what goes inside. So it'll be like so. And then there's going to be a lot of hangover, which is fine too. So we're going to set it up a little higher, 
so that way it can still grab here. It gives me some space to cut. Now I'm gonna work it here. So it's always go to test fit and test work so you can kind of let yourself know what you need to do before you make the big plunge. What I'll probably do is uh, start up a little higher, maybe put some tape here and make the cuts. See this is intersection is always gonna be a challenge. So I have to debate whether to put this carbon fiber right at the, the ledge, like so, or set it up a little higher. I'm gonna keep playing with it, kind of figure it out, and then I'll let you know when it's time to lay it down. Oh, another thing too, always make it a little longer so I went about an inch and a half, two inches. I don't like to waste material, but it would stink if something got off a little bit and you just didn't have enough material to cover that section. So if I lined it up right there, the weave and everything lines up with the weave up here, which is actually pretty cool. You see on this side. Same thing on that side. So man, I hope it lines up exactly like that. Cross your fingers. So what I did was I marked, I found where the weave was real nice and lined up. So I marked the center point on the tape of the carbon fiber piece. And I put out a piece of tape extension so I can know how far out to push it. So it's tacky. Usually they want you to wait until it doesn't stick to your finger. I like it when it's this tacky on a big piece like this because it allows me to move it around and still be able to peel it up without hurting the weave. So I'm gonna start Now the major thing to this is you should come back and push everything down every 15 to 20 minutes until it feels like it's gotten pretty hard. I also still have my roller. That just makes sure everything stays flat without me moving the weave. To make sure to come to all bends and moves and corners 
very time consuming. And that's one thing that, you know, needs to be understood is the time consumption on all this. Now what I've done to get all these corners, you got a popsicle stick with the thermal tape on it. It doesn't really need to be on both sides. Now what the thermal tape does is, like I said before, make sure that the epoxy doesn't stick. In fact, if you needed to hold down something like an edge, you could put this here, put some clamps or uh, those clothes pins and hold the edge to make sure it gets held. And when it's time to pull it off, it won't stick. So what I do is with this popsicle stick, I go and push down the edging. Now it's going to pop up several different times and that's okay. We're just going to come back and push on all this edging over and over and over again until it feels like it's 100% dry. Now the reason why it gets so much pop up and I'm sure you've seen other videos where other people don't do this as often is because I do it when it's not super duper duper tacky to allow me to be able to move this weave around if, if need be. So here's a, a real good section. It holds in real nice here. Of course, I still use my fingers. Get all this edging all the way up to the corners. Then you want to make sure you push around the little uprise. So every 15 to 20 minutes, such a nuisance for the next two hours, two to three hours actually, just depending on the weather. Now sometimes it's even good to hold sections down as you're pushing down on other sections because what happens is, is if you're pushing down on an area like here, since it's got an uprise, when I push on this side of it, it makes this side want to pop up. So what you want to do is push on opposite ends. So like here, I'll hold it and kind of push there. And this is just going to be the game for the next two to three hours, push down, corners. This is for good sharp edges. Sometimes you can even, it fits perfectly right here. I wanna make sure I use that. Now you don't wanna get messy with it because then the weave gets all distorted. So you really gotta make sure you're doing it right. Carbon fiber, I'm telling you, looks great, but takes a lot of patience. A lot of patience. And then your hands get a little sticky, but the only problem when I wear gloves, I don't know if it happens to everybody, but when I wear gloves, uh, the gloves become real sticky and it becomes kind of messy. So, I didn't work here, so let me press down here again. And even though these pieces are flat, you got to remember that you had uneven brushed on epoxy. So this really makes all the epoxy and the weaves sit down real nice and, and flat. So that way you don't have any, any high rise sections. Now I also got the razor blade and made the cuts in the corners. So that way the weave can actually fold down and sit down comfortably and not apply so much tension. Ta-da! There it is. All nice and solid. Everything held. All these areas that every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, pushing it down for two to three hours. Yeah, I'm tired. Stayed up pretty late to do it, and but it paid off. Everything's all nicely pressed. I'll show you a close-up video so you can see, but look how beautiful that looks. Like, it just looks beautiful. Touching it feels amazing. It, it almost reminds me of touching, uh, like, um, it's like snakeskin is what it feels like once it's hardened, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and put our 
207 crystal clear and get the first coat on. That way we can do some trimming. Same thing. Nice thin coat. Make sure you get the overhang a little bit so it's easy to cut when it's time. Don't lay it on too thick. Remember, thin coats are more successful coats. Especially once you're in here, you definitely want thin coats in this area so that way it doesn't like droop in as it's curing because that happens. So you just want to do nice thin coats. Same thing like here. See if I load it really thick here, it's going to collect there and then it's going to start dripping. Why deal with all that mess? Now doing two part pieces is definitely a challenge. It, it's And it's more lengthy. It, it, it's bas you're basically doing two full pieces compared to just doing one. It's almost like a pearl paint job, you know, like instead of just being done and doing the easy process, nope, it's you got to do the whole process all over again on top of making sure it all turns out clean. It's real easy to want to rush it and then, um, you know, rushing the process and then you spend more time cleaning it up or it just looks like dog crap really so you, you you've got to be patient with this kind of stuff you've got to have uh, a lot of patience and a little bit of OCD luckily luckily I have both now there's three holes here I'm not worried about those because those are in such a good spot on the back side I can just drill those out. So um, getting resin on it and then trying to cut it out, I can still cut it out after the fact. Like after I'm done, like the 24 hours of curing, not even 24, even like the four, four or five hours of curing, I can come and cut those out. All right, time to cut the excess. My curved X-Acto knife. magic tool so <clears throat> remember we just sand up these edges to get that real nice clean look I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a uh, secondary coat of epoxy okay again busting out the mini block with 220 grit I'm just gonna go along all the edges once again get my exacto knife What's nice about this is it offers flexibility.
that easy. See how it is? You've got a little lip on there and you can kind of feel it. So I'm gonna get my knife and go in the opposite direction, kind of at an angle that's still standing up. Like I said, you can feel it. Now don't run your fingers like this because believe it or not, I mean that's a soft, that's me doing it softly, but if you go and start trying to rub it, sometimes as this epoxy hardens, it'll become sharp and that will slice right through your finger. So just be cautious with that. Okay. Get my sandpaper with my thumb here, just kind of just trying to make it real nice and smooth. Just round it off. Oh yeah, it feels good. So right now I know it looks gray and it looks a little tacky. But I promise you, when you go and you add on that epoxy, it'll come back to life. Now this is the part that takes skill, comfort and certainty. There it is. Yep. Nice, rounded. Doesn't feel like it's going to hurt anybody, hurt anything. Now this part is going to be another fun part. I'll probably go get my other... Oh, I'm sorry, i got to zoom out. This line right here is going to be another fun part. I need to get my sharper X-Acto knife, my straight one, and cut along that line before I add that next coat of epoxy because if I go and I add epoxy to that, it's going to be very, very hard to cut that down. So this is the nice, sharp X-Acto knife. Um, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll take a video or a picture or put a link to the blades. Really great blades. I can't, can't say that enough. So I can see where the line is. So I'm gonna go and cut, and you see how it's already kind of lifting up. So I'm gonna keep doing that. See, and this is best and easiest to do during the first coat of epoxy, and it's still a little soft because it's easier to cut. Now, you really got to be careful with these blades because they'll cut s straight into the bone. So if, it, if you go a little a little crooked there, I just went down a little too much right here. That's okay. Um, I'll still get that filled with some epoxy. And then whenever we paint this like that black metallic color, this little section will get painted that color as well. And you'll see a real nice blend. And you won't even notice um, that a little small piece plus the license plate sits right here. So we're not entirely worried. I'm going to take off this lower layer of tape so I can put epoxy here. And that way the tape doesn't get held on and then I have to work really hard at trying to take that away. Like I said, it doesn't... This doesn't care to hold on to the epoxy. Maybe I'll even just leave the tape there. It'll be okay. And I'll just slowly let some sink in there. No big deal. All right, here we go. So I did a light sand. I had to sand a little more here. One little bristle was stuck in there. So I found it luckily ahead of time. So it didn't get caked on. Well, there is now I already cleaned this off with alcohol. And I did sand right here so I could apply a coat so this section will get covered so I could show you all what I'm talking about. So remember, you don't want to put heavy coats, but look at that. This is what I'm talking about. Do you see that? Let's see, let me see if you see that in the camera. Let's zoom in a little bit. 
And that, my friends, is how you do a nice, clean transition line. A lot goes into it, as you saw, but look how clean that looks. You can even see the weave match up pretty nice-like. And so now I'm just going to go through and put a nice light coat. Remember, you get too heavy, it's going to start running and making a mess. Look how great that looks. I really feel like Bob Ross when I say that. All right, so we're going to just add some right there real nice. There it is. There it is. See that? Can't even tell. It just looks like because that's where our body line is, let's scooch back a little bit. Go this way. See that? Just looks like it folded down right there. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this trunk.